Good evening. It's great to be with you again on this beautiful evening. I pray that you've had a very blessed day. And for those of you who cannot say, I feel blessed today, I pray that you feel the presence of the Lord with you, who has been your help and comforter and strength, and that is the greatest blessing of all. But it's good for us to be together. I'm Ray Amos, pastor of First United Methodist Church, in Elizabethan, Tennessee, and I cherish these few moments that we get to share together as we think about our wonderful Savior and the glorious, glorious gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And it is in Jesus' name that we come together and in Jesus' name that we pray. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life that you have given to us. We thank you for being able to experience life at this time in history. With all of its ups and downs, God is so good, and what a wonderful world. We thank you that you give us a small part in it, and that we can share uh, your love, your good news, and the joy of what it means to live by faith with all of those around us. We pray in the name of Jesus for everyone who is going through difficulties today, for those who just need an extra touch of the hand of God, we pray that they will feel the blessing, the hand that is already there. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that we'll be found faithful to you, pleasing to you in the way that we live our lives. And as we take a look at the scripture this evening, we ask that you speak to us, open our hearts, our minds, that we might hear what the Spirit has to say to each one of us. And now again, we lift up our prayers and our hearts and thanksgiving and joy to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as we share together this evening, I want to take us to the uh, book of Titus. Titus chapter 3, verse 1. Remind the believers to submit to the government and its officers. They should be obedient always, ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. Once, we too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy, and we hated each other. But when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us not because of the righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to insist on these teachings so that all who trust in God will devote themselves to doing good. These teachings are good and beneficial for everyone. This is a trustworthy saying. Do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels and fights about obedience to the law. These things are useless and a waste of time. Well, God bless his word as we think about those thoughts this evening that Paul has given to Titus and God has given to us. We live in a different time. We talk about that often these days. Uh, 
things are changing right before our very eyes. Christianity has received many different kinds of challenges. Our faith is challenged. And sometimes we have to be reminded of who we are. And it's important to notice that when Paul wrote this letter, today's scripture begins with those words to remind the believers. We do need to be reminded once in a while of who we are and what God expects of us. If not, we soon kind of just blend in with everybody else in the world, and there should be, honestly, there should be a re remarkable difference between true Christian living and the way that the rest of the world lives. I've always thought how important it is that when Jesus ascended into heaven and the disciples came down off that mountain that they went into the upper room and they remained there until the Holy Spirit came upon them. And it's just a reminder that God expects us to live on a higher level when it comes to uh, our morality, uh, our, the way we conduct our lives, the way we treat one another and love one another. God expects us to live on a higher level than this world so that the world might be able to see what's possible the kind of life that is possible when you live for Jesus. A question that uh, I would ask each of us as we look at this passage is, do you think, do you honestly believe that the way that you live your life, conduct your business, outside of the church, we know that when we come to the church, we behave at certain ways, at least I hope we do. But once we leave the church, do you believe that your Christian worship and life still goes on and that your work, your life that you live should be making a difference? I would hope that you say yes, because our Christian faith is not just something we do when we gather together as a congregation but it's the way we live our life constantly. I would suggest to you that if we cannot worship in the living of our lives throughout the week, we're not going to be ready for worship come Sunday morning or whenever uh, you may gather for worship. One of the ways that God loves the world is by saving people, by saving us all from sin. We love that passage of scripture in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have eternal life. Now I know we can take that scripture very personal and we should. God so loved me. God so loved you. That's true. He does. But we want to make sure we keep the first intent of that scripture God so loved the world. And the reason that is important is every time, every time we become a believer, we are saved, there is one more person in this world who has stopped doing the wrong things and has begun to do the right things. Now, do you hear what I'm saying? One more person in this world has stopped doing the wrong things and has begun to do the right things. And as today's scripture says, that these are good and beneficial for everyone. It's how God loves the world. If we could fill up the world with people who stop doing the wrong things and are doing the right things, what a different world this would be. The way that we live our life is important. It is so very important. We live in a time when we're being watched. Every move that we make is watched. Someone's paying attention. Does our walk of faith match the talk that we have? Are we just talking and not doing it? God expects us not only to be hearers of the word, but he expects us to be doers of the word also. And there are some real challenges out there. People are watching to see if we really do mean what we say when we say that Christ can change a life. 
I had a friend who's now gone to be with the Lord, but shortly after I met him, we were riding together one evening in the car, going to a meeting, and he was telling me about his son, and his son had died uh, in high school, I think he was a senior, and a very fine young man, but uh, he, he died of a disease, and and it was a tragic time for him, broke, certainly broke their hearts. And as I listened to the story, he told about the fact that his son had become a Christian. He had gone with some friends to a church and had become a Christian. And at the funeral, the pastor was talking about that son's being born again, becoming a Christian. And the pastor had said to that son, when you get home, I know you're going to tell your uh, mother and father right away and and the son said no I'm not going to tell them he said and I think there's great wisdom behind this he said if this is real if it's really happened in my life I should not have to tell them they're going to notice well the man as he told me that became very quiet and then I asked the obvious question did you notice and he just simply shook his head, and by that time, tears had formed in his eyes. And he said, yes, I did. Yes, I did. He was a changed person. I would hope that people could look into our eyes and our life and say, there's something different about you. And we would know what that difference is. We've come face to face with Jesus. We've learned of his redeeming love. We have the joy of being forgiven. And by the help of the Holy Spirit, we're able to live more like Jesus. And that should be the desire, shouldn't it, of every single one of us to be more like Jesus in all of our living. But we do tend to forget who we are sometimes and do need to be reminded. I think of an old song that Dottie Rambo used to sing that as I grew up hearing this song and it means so much to me. And it says, roll back the curtains of memory now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Remember, I'm human and humans forget so remind me, remind me, dear Lord. And that's important because we, soon after we become Christians, we're not careful, we start being a bit judgmental of others who are living the same life that we once lived not long ago. We need to learn to remember who we were and what it's like and what it's like to be redeemed and show a little bit of humility in our lives, a little gratitude toward Christ who has saved us. Christians are has-beens. Hear what I'm saying, we are has-beens. Uh, he writes in today's scripture the way it used to be for us. Uh, we didn't get along with one another and we were slaves, he says, to many lusts and pleasures. We were filled with envy and evil. But he says all of that has changed. And the reason it has changed is because Jesus loved us enough to save us. Let's look at our salvation for just a moment. Where did it come from? How did we obtain it? There's a beautiful passage of scripture that says, God saved us by grace. And he saved us when we believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us a long time ago. 
You see, the source of our salvation is God's mercy. It has absolutely nothing to do with any of our efforts. We could never be good enough to become a Christian. It is all by the love and the mercy and the kindness of God. He found us lost. He came to us. He did what was necessary on Calvary's cross to pay the penalty of our sins. He rose from the dead so he could offer us eternal life. He did it all for each one of us. And can't we do for him now this wonderful thing of accepting the free gift of salvation? It's abundant. There's plenty of it. God does not have to be stingy with salvation. There's enough of God's love to go around. And it is eternal. Our salvation is eternal. And that we can be thankful. I've often said we need Jesus for our eternal salvation. We do. Only Jesus can give us eternal salvation. But we need the Holy Spirit for our internal salvation. How can we live the way that God wants us to do but on our own? We can't. But Jesus gave us everything we need to live a life of love and humility and kindness and goodness. He's given us this as a free gift. There's no reason for any one of us to fail in our Christian living. Oh, I know we've got up days and down days, good days and bad days. I know about all of that. That's part of this human life that we have. But every day can end in victory. We sing that old hymn, Victory in Jesus. It's, that's where it is. In Jesus, my Savior, forever. And then once he has saved us, we have so much to give to this world around us that he loves. We can offer a kind word, a good deed, just a good way of living, honest and decent, the way that God expects of us. A lot of challenges out there these days and we are people who are expected of God to meet those challenges by being like Jesus. In the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38 it tells us that Jesus went about doing good for God was with him. Well that's the same for us. I'm not talking about doing a good deed now and then or taking on a, a special project, mission project or something at the church. That's, those things are good in themselves. But he's talking about a consistent life of goodness. Uh, whether you're in the church or you're down at the supermarket, uh, whether you're here or you're, you're going up and down the roads and someone cuts you off or something, uh, you, you're, your whole life is different. You don't. You don't respond the way you used to because you found something better in Jesus Christ. I pray that for each one of us that our lives will reflect what can be in this world when Jesus comes into our heart. It can be a wonderful world made better by the grace and love of Christ. Hallelujah.